Let's see my talk, or in other words, hello. And uh, hi guys! Okay, so I am a lover of books. So I was thinking that today I would start to read one of my absolute favorite books to you guys. Now I know that this isn't like, this isn't a very kind of, I guess you could say normal video, um, because there isn't gonna really, there isn't really gonna be much to watch. But, I don't know, I just, I enjoy reading and I thought that I would share one of my favorite books with you guys, so I'm just gonna go for it. So, one of my favorite books, well, one of my absolute favorite books is The Book Thief by Marcus Susak, and that is what I'm gonna start reading today. Now you can see that's fairly big and pretty thick, so, um, it's gonna take a... <laughs> it's gonna take probably like a series of videos to read it to you guys, but I'm super duper excited and I really hope that you like my rendition of kind of like reading it and stuff, so. Alright, so super excited, let's go. Death and chocolate. First the colors, then the humans. That's usually how I see things, or at least how I try. Here's a small fact. You are going to die. I am in all truthfulness attempting to be cheerful about this whole topic, but most people find themselves hindered in believing me, no matter my protestations. Please, trust me. I most definitely can be cheerful. I can be amiable, agreeable, affable, and that's only the A's. Just don't ask me to be nice. Nice has nothing to do with me. Reaction to the aforementioned fact? Does this worry you? I urge you, don't be afraid. I'm nothing if not fair. Of course an introduction, a beginning. Where are my manners? I could introduce myself properly, but that's not really necessary. You will know me well enough and soon enough, ending on a diverse range of variables. It suffices to say that at some point in time, I will be standing over you as genially as possible. Your soul will be in my arms. A color will be perched on my shoulder. I will carry you gently away. At that moment, you will be lying there. I rarely find people standing up. <laughs> you will be caked in your own body. There might be a discovery. A scream will dribble down the air. The only sound I'll hear after that will be my own breathing, and the sound of the smell of my footsteps. The question is, what color will everything be at the moment when I come for you? What will the sky be saying? Personally, I like a chocolate-covered sky. Dark, dark chocolate. People say it suits me. I do, however, try to enjoy every color I see, the whole spectrum. A billion or so flavors, none of them quite the same, and a sky to slowly suck on. It takes the edge off the stress. It helps me relax. A small theory. People observe the colors of a day only at its beginnings and ends, but to me it's quite clear that a day merges through a multitude of shades and intonations with each passing moment. A single hour can consist of thousands of different colors. Waxy yellows, clouds fat blues, murky darknesses. In my own line of work, I make it a point to notice them. As I have been alluding to, my one saving grace is distraction. It keeps me sane. It helps me cope considering the length of time I've been performing this job. The trouble is, who could ever replace me? Who could step in while I take a break in your stock standard resort style vacation destination, whether it be tropical or of the ski trip variety? The answer, of course, is nobody, which has prompted me to make a con, con which has prompted me to make a conscious, deliberate decision to make destruction my vacation. Needless to say, I vacation in increments in colors. Still, it's possible that you might be asking, why does he even need a vacation? What does he need destruction from? Which brings me to my next point: it's the leftover humans, the survivors. They're the ones I can't stand to look at, although on many occasions I still fail. I deliberately seek out the colors to keep my mind off them, but now and then I witness the ones who are left behind, crumbling among the jigsaw puzzle of realization, despair, and surprise. They have punctured hearts. They have beaten lungs. Which in turn brings me to the subject I am telling you about tonight, or today, or whatever the hour and color. It's the story of one of those perpetual survivors, an expert at least an expert at being left behind. It's just a small story, really, about, among other things, a girl, some words, an accordionist, some fanatical Germans, a Jewish fist fighter, and quite a lot of thievery. 
I saw the book thief three times. Now we'll take just a small break here. Keep in mind the book does not say who the narrator is. But in the comments below, I would like you to guess if you don't already know. And then whoever gets it right, I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure something out. So let's continue. Beside the railway line, first up is something white, of the blinding kind. Some of you are most likely thinking what, that white is not really a color and all of that tired sort of nonsense. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is. White is without question a color, and personally, I don't think you want to argue with me. A reassuring announcement. Please be calm, despite that previous threat. I am all bluster. I am not violent. I am not malicious. I am a result. Yes, it was white. It felt as though the whole globe was dressed in snow, like it had been like it had pulled on the way you pull on a sweater. Next to the train line, footprints were sunken to their shins. Trees were blankets of ice. As you might expect, someone had died. They couldn't just leave him on the ground. For now, it wasn't such a problem, but very soon the track ahead would be cleared and the train would need to move on. There were two guards. There was one mother and her daughter, one corpse. The mother, the girl, and the corpse remained stubborn and silent. Well, what else do you want me to do? The guards were tall and short. The tall one always spoke. The tall one always spoke first, though he was not in charge. He looked at the smaller, rounder one, the one with the juicy red face. Well, was the response, we can't leave them like. We just can't leave them. We can't just leave them like this, can we? The tall one was losing patience. Why not? And the smaller one damn near exploded. He looked up at the tall one's chin and cried, Spinstool? Are you stupid? The abhorrence on his cheeks was growing thicker by the moment. His skin widened. Come on, he said, traipsing over the snow. We'll carry all three of them back on if we have to. We'll notify the next stop. As for me, I had already made the most elementary of mistakes. I can't explain to you the severity of my self-disappointment. Originally, I'd done everything right. I studied the blinding white snow sky who stood at the window of the moving train. I practically inhaled it. But still, I wavered. I buckled. I became interested in the girl. Curiosity got the better of me, and I resigned myself to stay as long as my schedule allowed, and I watched. Twenty-three minutes later, when the train was stopped, I climbed out with them. A small soul was in my arms. I stood a little to the right. The dynamic train... The dynamic train guard duo made their way back to the mother, the girl, and the small male corpse. I clearly remember that my breath was loud that day. I'm surprised the guards didn't notice me as they walked by. The world was sagging now under the weight of all that snow. Perhaps ten meters to my left, the pale, empty-stomached girl was standing frost-stricken. Her mouth jittered. Her cold arms were folded. Tears were frozen to the book of these face. The Eclipse Next is a signature black to show the poles of my versatility, if you like. It, <clears throat> it was the darkest moment before the dawn. This time I had come for a man of perhaps 24 years of age. It was a beautiful thing in some ways. The plane was still coughing, smoke was leaking from both its lungs. When it crashed, three deep gashes were made in the earth. Its wings were now sawn off arms, no more flapping. Not for this mechanic little bird. Some other small facts. Sometimes I arrive too early, I rush, and some people cling longer to life than expected. After a small collection of minutes, smoke exhausted itself. There was nothing left to give. A boy arrived first with cluttered breath and what appeared to be a toolbox. With great trepidation, he approached the cockpit and watched the pilot gout gauging if he was alive, at which point he still was. The book thief arrived perhaps 30 seconds later. Years has passed, but I recognized her. She was panting. From the toolbox, the boy took out, of all things, a teddy bear. He reached in through the torn windshield and placed it on the pilot's chest. The smiling bear sat huddled among the crowded wreckage of the man in the blood. A few minutes later, I took my chance. The time was right. I walked in, loosened his soul, and carried it gently away. All that was left of the body, the dwindling smell of smoke, and the smiling teddy bear. As the crowd arrived in full, things, of course, had changed. The horizon was beginning to charcoal. What was left of the blackness above was, now, was nothing now but a scribble and disappearing fast. 
The man in comparison was the color of bone, skeleton-colored skin, a ruffled uniform. His eyes were cold and brown like coffee stains. And the last scrawl from above formed what to me appeared an odd yet familiar shape. A signature. The crowd did what crowds do. As I made, way w as I made my way through, each person stood and played with the quiet quietness of it. It was a small concoction of disjointed hand movements, muffled sentences, and mute, self-conscious turns. When I glanced back at the plane, the pilot's open mouth appeared to be smiling. A final dirty joke. Another human punchline. He remained shrouded in his uniform as a graying light arm wrestled the sky. As with many of the others, when I began my journey away, there seemed a quick shadow again, a final moment of eclipse. The recognition of another soul gone. You see, to me, for just a moment, despite all the colors that touch and grapple with what I see in this world, I will often catch an eclipse when a human dies. I've seen many of them. No. I've seen millions of them. I've seen more eclipses than I care to remember. <clears throat> the flag. The last time I saw her was red. The sky was like soup, boiling and stirring. In some places it was burned. There were black crumbs and pepper streaked across the redness. Earlier, kids had been playing hopscotch there on the street that looked like oil-stained pages. When I arrived, I could still hear the echoes, the feet tapping the road, the children's voices laughing, and the smiles like salt but decaying fast. Then bombs. This time, everything was too late. The sirens, the cuckoo shrieks on the radio, all too late. Within minutes, set. Within minutes, mounds of concrete and earth were stacked and piled. The streets were ruptured veins, blood streamed till it was dried on the road, and the bodies were stuck there like driftwood after a flood. They were glued down, every last one of them, a packet of souls. Was it fate? Misfortune? Is that what glued them down like that? Of course not. Let's not be stupid. It probably had more to do with the hurled bombs thrown down by humans hiding in the clouds. Yes, the sky was now devastating home-cooked red. A small German town had been flung apart one more time. Snowflakes of ash fell so lovely. Lovelily. You were tempted to stretch out your tongue to catch them, taste them. Only they would have scorched your lips, they would have cooked your mouth. Clearly I see it. I was just about to leave when I found her kneeling there. A mountain range of rubble was written, designed, erected ar around her. She was clutching at a book. Apart from everything else, the book thief wanted desperately to go back to the basement to write or to read through her story one last time. In hindsight, I see it so obviously on her face. She was dying for it, the safety of it, the home of it, but she could not move. Also, the basement didn't even exist anymore. It was part of the mangled landscape. Please, again, I ask you to believe me. I wanted to stop, to crouch down. I wanted to say, I'm sorry, child. But that was not allowed. But that is not allowed. I did not crouch down. I did not speak. Instead, I watched her a while. When she was able to move, I followed her. She dropped the book. She knelt. The book thief howled. Her book was stepped on several times as the cleanup began, and although orders were given only to clear the mess of the concrete, and although orders were given only to clear the mess of concrete, the girl's most precious item was thrown aboard was thrown aboard a garbage truck, at which point I was compelled. I climbed aboard and took it in my hand, not realizing that I would keep it and view it several thousand times over the years. I would watch the places where we would intersect. I would watch the places where we intersect and marvel at what the girl saw and how she survived. That is the best I can do, watch it fall into line with everything else I spectated during that time. When I recollect her, when I recollect her, I see a long list of colors, but it's the three in which I saw her in the flesh that resonate the most. Sometimes I manage to float far above these three moments. Sometimes I manage to float far above those three moments. I hang suspended until a septic truth bleeds toward clarity. That's when I see them formulate. The colors, red, white, and black. They fall on top of each other, the scribbled signature black onto the blinding global white onto the thick soupy red. Yes, so often I am reminded of her, and in one of my vast array of pockets, I have kept her story to retell. It is one of the small legion I carry, each one extraordinary in its own right, each one an attempt, an immense leap of an attempt, to 
prove to me that you and your human existence are worth it. Here it is, one of a handful, The Book Thief. If you feel like it, come with me. I will tell you a story. I'll show you something. All right, so that was just the introduction, but I promise I'm going to read more because this is actually really fun. And um, so yeah, next time will be the beginning of part one. I'm just gonna read like a couple chapters each time, not to make it too long, but not too short either. So I don't know, I hope you guys enjoy these. And um, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also make sure to comment down below and tell me what you think. And if you have any suggestions, also tweet me at the elephant underscore. And if you would like to see more, then definitely subscribe, and I will see you. Oh, and quick announcement. I am actually going to start just uploading on Sundays now. Now life is also getting a little hectic, so yeah. But I might every now and then post a surprise video on Thursdays, so keep an eye out for those. <laughs> Alright, so I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, or evening. Cheers!